Yeah, folks, it's time to head home. This season is a wrap. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin. (laughs) The Boston Red Sox just lost every single game in New York. They could not put together one singular win against the New York Mets. And for the first time since Game 70, the Boston Red Sox are back to 500, officially putting themselves at 70 and 70 on the season. Good for a tie for 5.5 games back of the postseason. And I have to call it, guys, this season is over. The Boston Red Sox, I'm declaring, will not make the playoffs. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to take a look at where everything went wrong. We're going to talk about why the Red Sox have been so poor in the second half. And we're also going to talk about who's possibly to blame for this collapse. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. I know, I know. Most of the time on this channel, I am unbelievably optimistic. In fact, I'm annoyingly optimistic to some of you guys. And for the most part, every single season, despite what happens on the field, I don't give up on a Red Sox team until they are mathematically eliminated. This year has just been completely different. These last few weeks, this last couple of months have utterly defeated me to the point where I just simply cannot say that this team will have a spark, that this team may be able to come back, right? It just, it feels like it's over and it's not just just me who thinks that it's not just this fan base who thinks that it's the players as well you could see it on their faces after every single loss you could hear it in the broadcasters voices they're calling this game everyone around this Red Sox team I think at this point has accepted the fact that this team will not be able to push themselves anymore in 2024 and that this season is over and it just sucks because watching these games has been absolutely miserable and the fact that they keep losing in so many different ways they have had had the third worst record in baseball since the All-Star break, dating back to the last 44 games. And if you take a look at what's gone wrong for this team, it's been absolutely everything. We could start with the offense because in this series alone, they grounded into six double plays. That is an average of two double plays a game. Their OPS in this series was just 563. That is 151 points below league average. They are averaging 10.3 strikeouts per game and seven hits per game. In this series, they had 10 more strikeouts than hits. No one but Jaron Duran is playing well at the plate right now. Well, actually, Nick Sogard really hasn't been all that bad for this Red Sox team. In fact, he's been pretty productive. He's a very professional player. But to be honest with you, Nick, you're a great player, but I just don't really care at this point, right? Because he's doing his job, but you know who's not doing his jo- their job? Rafael Devers, who's playing with a singular shoulder right now. I think at this point, we have to have a conversation as to whether or not you shut him down for the year so you don't risk injuring him for 2025. Tyler O'Neill stinks right now. Tristan Casas stinks right now. Will Your Abreu stinks right now. Say Don Rafaela stinks right now. Rob Refsnyder stinks right now. I don't know why I keep listing off names because everyone else on this team outside of Jaron Duran is stinking it up right now offensively everyone decided to jump into a slump at the exact same time to be honest with you it's pretty impressive it's impressive that the Boston Red Sox as a team went into a slump altogether that's not a normal thing that happens I have no idea how this Red Sox team has simply dug themselves into this hole offensively that they just simply can't seem to climb out of and it's really impressive in terms of offensive collapses going into the all-star break you were not only in the third wild card spot Spot. You also had a run differential of plus 41. That's 41 more runs scored than your pitching was allowing. And the pitching wasn't all that great for the first half of the season, to be honest with you. That meant that the offense was doing really well. At this point in the year, you are not only wildly out of a wild card spot, you're not only at a 500 record, you also have a negative six run differential. You are averaging 2.3 runs per game in your last 10 games. They simply cannot do anything offensively at the the moment and it's not helping that the rest of the team isn't doing that well either pitching wise although I will say starting pitching has been pretty solid recently I don't think they've been a big reason why they're losing these games I know Hauk and Bayo didn't have the greatest starts in the world in this series but at the same time too they kind of kept these games close they kept it into a point where normally your Red Sox offense should be able to at least pull out one win in this series but if you take a look at the bullpen they may be the biggest reason why the Red Sox have collapsed to this point because man in this series you had 
absolute and utter tomfoolery going on in the back end of this bullpen. You walked in three runs for the first time since 2010 in this organization, and it's not just the guys who you would expect to blow up. It's not just the guys who have been blowing up all over the second half. It was guys like Slayton, Martin, and Kenley who just simply could not get the job done. Red Sox Stats tweeted out this graphic that was shown on Nesson, and this pretty much perfectly sums up just how bad the Red Sox bullpen has been this half. In this graphic, it shows shows that in the second half, the Red Sox have a 650 ERA as a bullpen unit. That is unbelievably absurd. They are 10 and 11 in wins and losses. Opponents are hitting 298 off of them, and they have 15 blown saves in that time. I mean, it was just a flat out implosion by the back end of this pitching staff. It's happened a couple of years in a row now where this bullpen just simply cannot get the job done. It's happened a couple of years in a row now where the offense just goes into a black hole by the end of the season. And to make matters worse, the defense continues to be not even one of the worst defense in all of Major League Baseball. This season, they are officially up to 102 errors on the season. That is very clearly good for the worst amount of errors in the entire sport. The next closest is the Miami Marlins with 94, and you have 27 more errors than the average team in Major League Baseball. Every single facet of this team has utterly collapsed. Every single facet of this team gives you no reason for optimism, right? Again, I'm one of the most optimistic Red Sox fans by nature. I am annoyed optimistic for those of you who aren't and I even I have to sit here and say man it's just not happening. The Red Sox are not a good baseball team right now, and they haven't been for the last month and a half of the season. The big question now becomes, who's to blame for this, and how do you fix it going forward? But before we get into that, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Just helps these videos out a ton, and it's the best way you can let me know you're enjoying the content. Thank you all very much for taking a second to doing so let's get back to the video so like I said before we hit a break there, it's been the third season in a row where the Red Sox have pretty much collapsed in the month of August. It technically should be four years if you're including 2024 here because 2021, they also collapsed a little bit as well. It just wasn't enough of a collapse to not make the postseason. And a lot of people immediately turn towards Alex Cora and they say, hey, he's the common denominator here. He's the problem with this Red Sox team. And there may be some validity to that, right? At some point, you have to start looking at the fact that Alex Cora for this is the fourth year in a row now, hasn't been able to push this team to a winning record in the last couple of months. But the reasons for these collapse have been basically totally different every single time. Looking back at 2023, the big reason why the Red Sox collapsed towards the end of the year was simply the fact that they were relying on too many aging veterans to get them through 162 games. Coming into 2023, you had a rotation of Corey Kluber, who was absolutely miserable, James Paxton, who was solid for a little bit, stunk, and then got injured, Chris Sale, who was exactly like James Paxton, Justin Turner, who played the last month injured on this team, Trevor Story, who, who was injured and then tried to come back and then wasn't very good because he came back too early, right? You're talking about relying on too many older players trying to push them towards a World Series. This season, it's a collapse for a totally different reason. Actually, the exact opposite. At the end of the day, the reason why the Red Sox collapsed this season, in my opinion, may have a little bit to do with Alex Cora, but I think it mostly has to do with the fact that this Red Sox roster construction was not built to sustain 162 games. We talked about it at the beginning of of the year. Literally day one, we said, hey, this pitching staff has the potential to be good. The problem is by the time you get to the middle of July, you are going to be in completely unknown territory with a majority of these starters. And we saw exactly what that looked like. You expected the young core of this team to be perfect in order to compete. And that's just not realistic. It's not fair to the players on these teams. The guys like, say, Don Rafaela, Will Your Abreu, Tanner Howe, Cutter Crawford, these are guys who should be going through bumps and bruises at the major league level. It's part of developing and growing in a big league uniform. And unfortunately, the Red Sox left no margin for error to allow those guys to do that and still sustain their winning ways. The second you saw those guys go through bumps and bruises, all of a sudden, this team is in a really bad place. It happened in the bullpen, it's happened in the rotation, and now it's happening on the offense as well. And to me, that's the biggest reason why this Red Sox team for the third or fourth year in a row totally collapsed in the last 
last two months of the season. And that's not even to take into consideration the fact that they have had absolutely miserable luck in terms of injuries for a couple of years now. This season, basically all the veterans that you wanted to say, hey, we're going to go very youth heavy, but we're going to rely on some veterans here to try and mix it up a bit. Those guys all got injured. Lucas Giolito, Trevor Story got injured six games into the season. Garrett Whitlock has been injured multiple times. Even guys who were on this team and were veterans that appeared in most of the games this season at some point spent some time on the IL. Nick Pavetta, Chris Martin, Tyler O'Neill, Rafael Devers, who should be on the IL, but is an absolute warrior and he isn't, all have been injured at some point this season. Even Kenley has spent time on the IL. It's just been absolutely miserably bad injury luck on top of a roster constructed to really not sustain 162 games. And that doesn't even take into consideration what the Red Sox did at this year's deadline because the thought process behind it was pretty solid. We're going to go and we're going to get a couple of bullpen arms, a starting pitcher, and a right-handed bat. Well, in total, those guys are either injured or really bad, or in most cases, they're both injured and really bad on this season. The deadline didn't work out for you. You didn't get the supplement you needed. And at the end of the day, while yes, Cora has had a collapse in the last three seasons, 2021, you get there to the postseason. It all boils down to the fact that FSG, the ownership of this team, simply did not want to invest in their product the way they should invest. We talked about it this offseason. We talked about it going into the year. We're going to be talking about going into the offseason as well. It wasn't Heim Bloom. It's not Craig Breslow. I don't think it's Alex Cora. I don't think it's Pete Fatsy, right? It's not Andrew Bailey. At the end of the day, they are only allowed to utilize the tools that they are given. If they are not given the proper tools, the job gets really hard and they could try and make things work and things possibly do work for a while, but eventually those tools are going to break down because they're doing jobs that they shouldn't need to do. And that boils down to ownership simply not allowing allowing the front office of this team and the manager of this staff to be able to get the tools that they need in order to truly compete over 162. And it is absolutely infuriating that the same problem that we've been talking about for three years in a row now continues to rear its ugly head. And there's really no end in sight. Now, what I will say about this season, even though it's over and the Red Sox most likely are not going to make the playoffs, there are some positives to take out of this year. And I think the positives and the difference between what you saw on 22 and 23 is that you are going into the offseason with a clear idea as to how this team can win going forward. What you saw this season was the emergence of a core, a true core of a next really good Red Sox team. Tanner Houck, Rafael Devers, Tristan Casas, and Jaron Duran are going to be very good for the next few years. Those are going to be guys who are going to anchor this team going forward. Now all you have to do is build around them, ensure that they have the proper tools in order to get the job done and that to me is very exciting and there's also a whole lot of excitement to be had with the prospects in this system because despite the Red Sox being so mediocre this season what's not mediocre has been the Red Sox farm system which has been one of the most productive in the entire sport in terms of the development and growth of their top prospects you're talking about additions to this team next year that could be all-star caliber talent now, will they be I don't know but the potential is there for that to absolutely happen you've got your big for right on the cusp of being major league players and that's an exciting thing as well so this season a little bit different in terms of the actual it's over statement the last two years it's been it's over and I have no idea how this team is going to figure themselves out I have no idea how they're going to be competitive in the near future this year it's it's over they stink but it's also hey they're not going to stink for very long. There is now legitimate excitement for 2025. So at this point, what I'm watching 2024 for is to see the adjustments made by these young players. I want to see Tristan Casas figure himself out after going into a slump. I want to see, say, Don Rafaela do the same thing. I want to see Brian Bayo make adjustments in the last month of the season. I want to see these guys start to really put themselves together. So going into 2025, they can utilize the experience of failure that they had this season to make themselves better and make themselves more competitive. But at this point, I'm not watching these games for competitive baseball. And that's a really, really crappy thing to say for the third season in a row. But that's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below, what are you watching the rest of the season for? Is there anything to watch for the rest of the season? Are you like, man, it's football time. I am all set on the Boston Red Sox. Let me know all your thoughts on the Red Sox season being over in the comment section 
down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. It just helps these videos out a ton, and it's the best way you can let me know you're enjoying the content. Don't forget, if you want to listen instead of watch these videos, all you got to do is head over to your favorite podcasting app and look up Red Sea Radio. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seats.